everyone. Welcome to HR Tech Talks. I'm so glad to have you here with us. As always, it's going to be a great conversation, really diving into some fun stuff and helping us understand the importance of care. And so I don't want to spoil it too much. We'll hear a lot from Julian just a little bit on that. But um, as always, wherever you are, if you're listening in live, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Feel free to ask questions, jump in. By the way, if you're watching us on demand later on, you can also ask questions. If you tag our speaker, tag me, we'll see those. And other people who are in this conversation will also be notified. So you can continue the conversation even later on, depending on when you catch this. I know I've heard from some people recently like, oh, I want to be there live, but I've got this thing going on at work. And like, don't apologize. You're good. We still get a lot of people that watch this in that first 24 hours, especially after the episode goes live. So, so glad all of you are here. Chime in, let us know where you're listening in from. It's always going to be a blast. And again, if you've got comments, I'll go ahead and speak for myself, but definitely for Julia too, and just say, hey, throw them in there. She has dedicated her life to solving this problem, helping employers to, to figure this out and helping us support our people in an effective way and their extended families and so on beyond that. And so she'd love to answer any questions and, and share with you if there's any solutions or ideas she's seeing that are working. So without any further ado, I'll bring her into the conversation. Julia, welcome, glad to have you. Thank you, it's great to be here. Excited Absolutely. to have everyone. It's going to be a fun conversation. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to talk shop, share some ideas, get into all the good stuff. So you're with Grace, and I'd love for you to give yourself a quick, give us a quick intro into you and Grace, if you don't mind, just what you do, who you serve, those kind of things. Sure. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Grace, and we are a global care empowerment solution. So we partner with leading employers to help their employees and their families around the globe to make those employees effective at supporting their loved ones so they can be their best selves at work. Yeah. Awesome. Global care empowerment. That's a new one for me. I like that. Yeah. We look at this as it's, um, it's not just about, you know, helping people to solve, say, you know, a caregiving referral, right? A lot of people right. think about how do you just help someone to take care of their, their family in more of an episodic way. We we'll look at this as it's it's more of a holistic thing, right? People have their home lives and they have their work lives, and you need to empower them to be effective at home if you want them to be successful at work. Oh goodness! Well, I think about part of my job is to understand what technology comes around there, but also who they serve, right? That the ones who are serving an enterprise company won't serve someone who's got a hundred employees, and vice versa. But I'm always looking at trying to bucket different companies. And if I was going to bucket someone that'd be interested in Grace, it's they have a team, they have a leadership that really cares about their people and is invested in their success. Is that fair to say? Yep. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Awesome. And that knows no industry bounds, by the way. Like it's all over the place. So I'd love for you to give us a little bit of insight. So you talked about the focus here is, is caregiving, is helping people be their best at home so they can be their best at work, which I think is a yeah. really great concept. How you know, what's happening in that space right now? What's the, what's important? What are you hearing from the companies you're working with, interacting with? What are the, the hot topics in caregiving, essentially? Yeah, I think a lot of employers are starting to pay attention to the fact that, you know, if employees can't manage their family situations at home, it's one of the key reasons why they're dropping out of the workforce or they're staying, but they're failing to thrive. Right? And that creates a drag on productivity, a drag on engagement, a drag on the overall success of an organization. So employers are becoming more and more wise to that topic. And then, you know, I think a lot of companies have made investments in mental health. And um, a lot of that has been, you know, more kind of general and supporting people. And I think in the last six to 12 months, we're starting to see some of the best employers really digging into what are the biggest issues people are dealing with within those mental health needs mm -hmm. and caring for others is rising to the top. Um, it's one of the big reasons why people are struggling and, and it's not just that they need to talk about it, but they oftentimes need to solve a lot of these challenges at home as well. So mm -hmm. it's a balance for everybody on a daily basis. Yeah. I was telling you before we started, we went live a few minutes ago that our data show that when people are quitting, it's like stress and burnout and things, but it's often not just the job, but they're trying to balance all these other things, right? That work life aspect of it is a big trigger for them not being able to, to manage the overall just burden of the stress long, long term. And the challenge that companies have is, well, work life can feel like huge. How do we balance these things out? And I love that you're saying, hey, we can give us a direction, a track to run on, which is caregiving, because caring for the people in your life that really need it, that's emotionally challenging, that can be physically challenging. It's just, it can be difficult, but if you have the tools, 
If you have the right partner behind you, it can help to, to really make a positive change in that area. So it doesn't feel hopeless or like this you know, thing that has no end, but there is an actual way to, to tackle that essentially. That's right. I think we're starting to see employers take on a bigger focus on this concept of total well-being, right? So not sort of the old version of wellness of just focusing on physical wellness challenges, but really more oh, holistic. Tracker is right there. There yeah. you go, right? It's one part, but you know, you think about there's physical, there's mental, mm -hmm. there's financial and career, and there's also more your your communal connection familial. Right? And so the way we look at that is all of our similarities and all of our differences, all of our challenges across all those spheres start and end with where you come from, where you wake up in the morning, where you go home to at night. Right? It's your genes. It's your environment. You know, I've been seeing more and more people posting on LinkedIn talking about how they've been investing more in their home life and how that's enabled them to then be better at work and saying it actually, it never works the opposite way. You can't continue to overinvest at work to be better at home. It only flows one direction. Goodness. I don't need morbid, but I heard an amazing story a couple months back that has stuck with me. And every time something like that comes up, it hits me. Is that this person went through and interviewed people who were who were going to die and said, what's most important to you? What do you remember most? Like, what do you regret? regrets? And not a single one of them said, I wish I'd put in one extra hour at work. <laughs> right. Just done one more project, written yeah. one more report. It's always the people around us. I wish I'd built deep relationships. I wish I had leaned more on those people and told them I loved them more and spent more time with them. And again, I don't want to get all soft and fuzzy, but this, there is a true value to that feeling. As you pointed out earlier, I'm able to perform better at work because I am able to take care of those things that are outside the four walls of the business. So there is a real impact there. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to like derail that one, but that, that hits me every time I think like, I love the, the comment about it doesn't go both ways, essentially. That's what I was coming back to. Yeah. If you help people to be better at home, they will be better at your company. So you talk about one of the ways that you approach this to give it a little bit of structure, because as I said earlier, this work-life thing can feel like, oh gosh, like where do we even start? You talk about the pillars, right? The pillars of this caring culture. I'd love to hear from you what that is, what those look like, and how that all fits together. Yeah. So we kind of look at this a little bit like a house. Right. So the foundation is really about how you listen to your employees. Right. What are the formal and informal ways that you open up the organization's ears? Sure. One part of that is surveying. One part of that is the way you engage your people one on one. Right. Managers, et cetera, that you create an open environment for people to share and you ask the right questions in a way that invites people to to answer accurately. Um, and then when you think about the pillars, we look at that as that's a lot of the policies, programs, initiatives that an organization would run. So if you're really focusing on building a caring culture, supporting um, those families at home, yes, there's been a lot of talk lately about flexibility and about leave, right? Those are sort of accommodative benefits that, first of all, just says, let's just give you the space to go figure things out. Um, and organizations are starting to make more strides on how do they approach that in a way that's equitable, right? And recognizes that different people have different types of family situations they'll need to step away for. Um, but that's one element to it. Then beyond kind of the lead and flexibility pillars is support programs, right? How do you actively as an organization give people more of the resources and support to be able to be effective? Then there's more kind of non-accommodative or appropriative type programs, which is more about how do you train managers and HR business partners to really see what's going on in their midst and how to engage their employees on, on these topics in ways that are productive, right? So there's a lot of research out there about how um, folks aren't properly trained for that. And a lot of people are, are stretched, um, particularly now in this new environment we've been in the last handful of years. So really helping folks to, to train them. Oftentimes their employees are not going to bring up some of those needs that they have. But you know, how do you really bring that out? How do you demonstrate more of that empathy, more of that caring for people that makes them feel seen and heard? And the next kind of pillar aligned with that is how do you create the space for people going through similar challenges to, um, to bring voice to that? So more affinity groups, ERGs right, to normalize a topic and to give leadership to that topic, right, with something like an executive sponsor. 
And then kind of lastly associated with all of those is how do you make sure that you're setting up a culture that structurally isn't discriminating or creating inequity, right? So you think about different people are dealing with different challenges at home. That's a huge foundational element that drives inequity and in how people can show up at work every day. So how do you make sure that not only in soft ways with training people, but also in hard ways that you're designing all those policies, programs, and initiatives to really ensure that you're not discriminating and supporting the equity and inclusion of those employees. I've started making a ton of notes because I'm going to try to come back to as many of those as I could. Um, yeah. I think any one of those we could spend the next 30 minutes on just getting deep into this is how you do it well. This is so important yeah. because it enables all these other things we care about. Um, one of the ones that kind of cuts across a couple of those, you talk about the managers and really listening and everything else. One of the things that's, that is, I've been saying more and more of the last year is when I hear leaders say, Oh, you know, open door policy. We are open to these things. That's often needs to be emotional before it's a physical open door or a digital open door. Yeah. Because if you're saying, Oh, you can come in with anything, as long as it's not related to your family or your health or your mental status or your needs or anything else, just bring me work tasks. That's all I really want. Yeah. No one's going to come out and say that, but they're, the cues they're sending, the way they respond can send those signals that, hey, those things aren't important to us. You need to get back to work. And I've personally quit a job in the past because I had a, a manager that, that sent those very signals to me. And I realized that mm -hmm. the things that were important to me were at cross purposes of the things that were important to her. Yeah. And people every day are making that same kind of decision when they realize, oh, you know what, this matters. But for them, it's just getting in the way of whatever, you know, my productivity at the job. Yep. So any recommendations for employers? You said you said there's lots of ways to listen. There's lots of ways to, to do that. Any ideas or recommendations on how to listen better? Is it just when you have these kind of meetings? Is it surveys? Is it skip levels? Is it like what, what way really leads to a good impact there? Any ideas? Yeah, I think it's it's become harder and harder in the last couple of years because everyone's so burnt out. It's hard for everyone to have sort of the emotional space to actually engage each other on these topics because everyone's, you know, really up to here dealing with their own. But it really starts from one-on-one -on -one engagement and really wanting to understand what people are dealing with on their day-to-day -day basis and what they need to be able to address that to then be able to be effective at work, right? So whether that's having a loved one who, you know, again, sorry to be morbid, right? But maybe someone's passed away in COVID or they're sick. Right. How do you actually understand what it is that that employee thinks that they need? Right. Understand how they're doing and give them the space for that. I think one of the challenges, as you mentioned, right, is a lot of employees are not going to bring up certain topics. They don't think people want to hear about it. And there are certain ways you can try to get at that, you know, that I just mentioned. But then beyond that, it's how do you potentially see certain cues that might indicate that people have certain care needs, right? Or that they have um, certain areas of burnout and just say, hey, you know, feels like maybe um, there are some topics here, right? You've got things going on. If I can support you, please let me know. Totally understand it might be personal, right? But X and Y and Z are always available and just offering things. And then in addition to, to those two, it's really about how you how you make sure that you know you're not just listening proactively, but you're putting things out there and you're saying these are the resource programs. Here's how you can engage with them, right? And normalizing that by talking about your own story too. So that's sort of the house and how we think about the caring culture is how do you communicate? Starting from a person to a person. Sometimes just assume it exists and share your own situation. And people will meet you with that. When you talk to someone as though you're an employee and you share and you're vulnerable, people will meet you with that because they start feeling that it's a little bit of a safer space. Yes. Oh, gosh. That's just such a great recommendation there. Because um, one thing to say, hey, you got some problem that I can help you deal with? Right? People immediately start to withdraw. Like, what's going on? What, what do they see? Yeah. It's wrong. Versus no. A, yeah. <laughs> hey, no, what do you mean? I'm good. Um, but to say, hey, Feels like this is there. Here's the things where that I've been, I've been, you know, challenged by or dealing with, struggling with. That opens the door for them to say, "Wow, that's hard too." But then, hey, I'm private. I'm good, right? I don't feel yeah. like contributing to this. Or, yeah. you know what? I've been actually feeling some of the same things. Can we talk about it? That 
at least puts that ball in their court in a very neutral and non non confrontational kind of way, so they can engage or they can right. Or maybe it's, hey, here's the thing that I was dealing with. And by the way, I forgot, we actually offer this tool over here that that helps solve for that. So I was able to get this help, this support, this resource. And it helped me in an important moment. Again, whether they choose to engage in the conversation or not, you've still clued them in on that without saying, you have that issue, Julia. So go over there and use that resource, right? You need the EAP, you need the whatever else that, and that can feel very cold sometimes and calculating compared to that, the personal story piece. Yeah, it needs to be less, oh, you have a problem, here's a solution, and more all these things that all of us are dealing with every day are normal, right? These are universal challenges. So, you know, you're not weird for, you know, needing to take care of a loved one. You're not weird for having, you know, mental health challenges on a given day or a sense of burnout from so many things going on. We're all going through this, right? I'm going through it as a leader. You're going through it as a team member. You know, you tell me, right? No matter how much you want to share, you tell me how I can be a better support to you to be able to go get that done. Whatever it is, you need to go get done to be able to come back and be present. Sometimes people are going to need to take a little bit of leave. Sometimes people just need more active help to go actually take care of some of those things or to be able to find where they want to go find those resources that might not even be within the company's walls, Mm -hmm. right? So different people will need different things. And as a manager, it's impossible to make sure that, you know, you can anticipate every single thing that anyone could ever possibly need because people are, are all different, but we all have a lot of the same challenges. And so normalizing that is a, is a big step towards at least providing the space for that to exist. One of the things that you said earlier, you talked about leave being a piece, but it's not the you know one button solution to solve all this. And the picture I had in my head when you mentioned leave as this, it, some companies say, well, well, that's the answer. We'll just offer you leave. And it's essentially saying, hey, that's your problem. Go deal with it. That's how it feels almost. I know it offers a benefit. You're trying to take care of them. But it's it's also saying, hey, that's that's something for you to handle. If it's combined with something else, like we're giving you time off, but we're also going to allow you access to these other resources. That creates a different con- conversation, too, for that person saying, we're, we're here in your corner if you need us, but also we're not going to overstep and get in your business and, you know, feel like we're looking over your shoulder with this. And I think that's a great thing to mention there, too, just because... We, we actually have some data on types of leave companies are offering, and we find that employees say, hey, that's it's not flexible enough for me, right? or it doesn't yeah. solve the real problem that I'm trying to solve with this, just giving me some time, right? Then I've got to worry about, do I, anyway, so we can go deep on that, but I'll just say that, I like that you talked about com- combining that with something else, so it's not just a, here's, here's a hall pass, go figure it out before you come back to the classroom, you know, all on your own. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that leave is usually happening at a tricky transition point in someone's life, right? You you wouldn't need time to go figure it out if you knew what to go do. (laughs) And so, you know, whether it's bringing a new loved one home, right, from the hospital or an adoption or what have you, whether it's trying to step back and take care of a parent or a spouse who's ill or something going on, usually there's some sort of inflection point for why people need to transition from a previous status to a new status in their life. And people need support through that. And so leave is one piece of it, but sometimes you can also even prevent people from needing the leave by prevent the issues from boiling over, right? You can give people more of the tools to reduce some of that need. So whereas new parental leave, right? That's a transition that's sort of time bound. You know, that's coming. Different people have different ways. They might want to balance that time to be able to come back to work. But say you have a loved one who's ill, right? Say you have someone who needs some extra help. Being able to actually manage through that, you might be able to give people more of those resources proactively that could prevent them from needing to take an unknown amount of time out of the office, right? So there's there's a lot of value to that where particularly leave programs can be more expensive than health benefits. So there's a huge financial value to thinking about. It. It's not just giving people space and say, go figure it out because not everybody has the tools to be able to do so effectively, quickly, and if, you know, appropriately for their life. The ounce prevention, prevention is worth a pound of cure, essentially, right? Let's try to help solve this at some point while it's small enough or... Yep. Now, any, any personal thing that's happening doesn't feel small right to the person that's happening to for us and talking about it in an abstract way it can be like oh that's right now let's address it while it's still relatively small okay 
for them, it's this raging inferno in their life that they're trying to figure out an answer to, and it feels like the walls are coming down around them. Um, so there's this mental health expert that I've been following lately. And one of the things that he says that I, I've never thought about it this way, but it says when we, some of the problem here, some of the challenge people are dealing with is that they had a picture of what the, that future looked like, what was next for them. And this has suddenly interjected this without their choice, without their control into the situation. And it's changed that future picture looks like. And one of the recommendations is you take a moment to grieve what was, what you hoped for, mm-hmm. and then adjust to what is now. And I think that's a great way to look at this because everybody, when this happens, sometimes that is, there's a moment of things are never going to be the same potentially, right? That suddenly mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of, an, of a parent that needs it, or we now have a, a child with, with, with this thing we need to take care of. But again, there's all these different variations here. I'm trying to cast some big nets to cover some, but to say, Hey, that's not the future anymore. This has now changed and taking a yep. moment to, to address that and agree with that and then move on to whatever's next. Um, we'll just, as you were talking a minute ago, that's one of the things that I was thinking about the importance of that reflection. Okay. I'm going to my list here. Uh, one of the other ones you talked about was the training components. Would yeah. you talk about that a little bit, how that factors into this? Um, are there, are there things that work well in there or like, Hey, you've, you've got to do X or it's all going to fall apart. I'd love to hear from you. What, what might be best practices in that area? Yeah, I think it's uh, sometimes what we see in the status quo with organizations is that they try to address challenges through say the benefits team or, you know, some sort of HR administrative team. And they don't look at this as this is a frontline issue, right? How many employees do you think are knocking on the door of HR and saying, hey, can I have X, Y, Z additional benefit, right? Can you tell me more about these leave programs? And so it's, this is something that happens day in, day out, right? If you're caring for loved ones, that's literally every day before you come to work, right? Every day when you go home from work and oftentimes throughout the day, Yes. right? And that's something that's not just, hey, let me go find what, you know, the benefits team has offered for me in terms of leave or some sort of support program, but how does my manager actually support what I'm doing throughout the day, right? And so that's where it comes down to helping people understand, just wrap their arms around everything that's happening. Because one of the biggest things that I've learned on a regular basis being with Grace is it's impossible for us to imagine what's happening in the home of the person sitting at the desk next to us. You might think you know them really well, but the biases that you encounter when you talk to people in leadership roles around an organization are astounding. So let me give you a fact, right? There's Washington Post article in the last week. You know how all these companies have been planning, focusing on everyone leaving work for childcare? They think this whole topic about caregiving is about moms. Did you know 4X the number of people who are dealing with children who are kept out of the workforce, it's 4X the number of them that are dealing with adults and elders. How many organizations do you go to that are like, yep, I got an adult and elder care challenge, right? Yeah, I got people who are supporting their spouses with cancer, their parents with dementia. No, absolutely not. Everyone still thinks this is about, you know, new babies being born, right? And that they can't find affordable childcare. So we have a lot of biases when we come to work that are right, that are wrong, et cetera, but actually helping people to see a broader landscape at the manager level, help them to understand people are going to be dealing with things you can't even fathom. I mean, literally when I see, you know, the different challenges people are dealing with um, within our membership base at Grace, it's, it's astounding, right? And it's giving people that space to be, who they are with what's going on and training managers to identify, Hey, something looks like maybe it's not quite right. How do I normalize whatever they're going through, give them the space for that. And then also find, are there tools we can offer them? And that comes down to just helping a manager to sort of see the breadth of what's possible and how they can support that. Or sometimes in ways that doesn't always take an extra amount of time from them. Right. So that's where you start thinking about where do I have programs that I can put in place that help to support managers and HR because topics around caring through people, right? These are huge emotional topics. They can take a lot of time out of your day to day. 
I think that's something. It's not that every manager is, say, not empathic or not supportive, but you just think about the number of hours on the day that a manager has, right? And how much work they can do before they burn out. And sometimes managers need to be able to identify and to triage, right? Provide that support, be able to triage to the right resource or support program to be able to engage people in what they need. They can't take it all on. So help them to see what they need to see, help them to understand what's possible that could be happening, and then help them to make the right connection points if they're not the right person to be solving the problem. This has been like a masterclass and the titles are like caring, you know, caring culture. And this really is about building yeah. that caring culture. I love that. Um, so if someone is listening to this and is curious about what Grace is up to, what your, you know, what the companies, the problems you're helping companies and people fundamentally solve, what's the best way for them to connect or follow you? Yeah, they can reach out either on LinkedIn. They can look up our website. It's www.withgrace.com. It's W-I-T-H-G-R-A-Y-C-E.com, right? And um, if they want to help support their people and no matter who they're caring for, where those loved ones are around the world, they want to help them be able to be better at work. Um, we partner with leading organizations on this topic all the time and really focused on engaging them, engaging their people, frankly, to take that back to the employer and help them figure out how to iterate and building a more caring culture. So we'll be glad to connect with them. Thank you so much for joining me and for sharing your passion on this. I think it's, again, one of the things that stuck with me is you said, yeah, this is, there's like infinite variations, it feels like, but it all comes down to these very fundamental problems that all of us at some point are going to experience. And so it helps to tie us all together in that uh, the human race thing there. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Ben. All right. Goodness. To everybody else out there, I hope you got some good notes, some good ideas. Again, my, my scribble scrabble over here, great ideas and suggestions there from Julia and the team over at Grace. Go ahead and give them a check out. Again, as she mentioned, their name is G-R-A-Y-C-E. So don't misspell that one. Thank you all again for joining us for HR Tech Talks. I am so excited and honored to be able to serve you, help you out in this way, bring you some great conversations. Appreciate you all for what you're doing. Have a good rest of your week.